Amazing. We're live. Okay. Okay. I'm so excited to be having this conversation today with you, my beautiful sister. I will describe you first, I'll introduce you, and then we'll get into the conversation of today. Mm -hmm. We can think about today's conversation as like marriage mentorship, and it's for both singles, married, anyone who's interested in marriage, mm -hmm. I believe will have something to take out of this conversation. But before we jump into it, we're going to be looking at lessons learned from Queen Asa. But before we get there, I'd like to do a quick introduction of you. I have known you for a couple of years now, maybe. And I would like, I would describe you as um, a big sister, really. You've been a handholder. You've been a prophetic midwife. You've been a strong support system. You've been a friend. Um, you've been, you've been a vantage point. You've given me... Um, an advantage with your perspective about my life. And you're a wife, you're a mom to three amazing children who I often hear in the background when I'm on the phone with you. <laughs> um, you are so real, you're so real, your heart is so beautiful. I'm so grateful for this relationship and our friendship and how we've nurtured it even in the busy seasons of life. Thank you for taking me seriously. Thank you for taking this invitation seriously and for showing up. Um, I'm so glad to have you. It's an honor to be your host today. It's an honor. Thank you so much. Everything you said, I think you've been all of that to me. So. <laughs> oh, you're so sweet. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Thank you. You're kind. So um, my sister, um, I feel like in the body of Christ, there is a reschooling that needs to happen on the conversation mm -hmm. of marriage. Mm -hmm. We are not going to pretend that when we look around, the things we see are not discouraging. We won't pretend. It's true. There's so much to discourage us out there. There's so many people who haven't really understood the blueprint, the template, the model on how to make this work. And um, this is just a conversation starter. We might do a sequel, but this is a conversation starter. We wanna dive into the book of Esther. We wanna see how that woman um, navigated marriage and what she can teach us about marriage mm -hmm. today. We're going to further get into the applicability of the lessons in today's contemporary world, how we can apply in our lives and our marriages. But let's just start with unpacking the book of Esther. What, what have you found to be Esther's unique advantage? What can we learn about marriage? How can women, how can women get into this? Talk to us. <laughs> Well, I think that the book of Esther, about Esther, as, as I got into it, I found out it, it was much simpler than we'd made it seem all these years, in all my little years of Bible study and, and just hearing and reading about Esther and watching the several films about Queen Esther. Mm -hmm. And you realize that this is an everyday woman. Hmm. Forget the title for a hmm. second. Hmm. Let's put all titles aside because the mere fact is this, she was made queen because of who she was. Wow. The queen is not about Queen Esther. The queen is about the woman that she already was and getting to play the perfect part to now get the crown. Mm. And we often miss that. We often take the title queen and nobody bestowed that upon us. And that is a tough thing. And I always fear to say that amongst my fellow women mm. because they've been confused with this queen title and they think it's a compliment. And my question is always to them, in my mind, I'm always playing this game. I can't accept that queen title. And you definitely can't accept it either. Because I need to know who gave you the crown. Hmm. And some will say, well, God crowned me. No, God didn't crown you a queen. Because if that's the case, in the kingdom to come, we'd all be kings and queens. Hmm. Even the Bible says, a hair, so long as it's a child so long as it's a child. So if I'm queening and you're queening, <laughs> we're missing it. Mm. Where is the King Ahasuerus 
that will make you king. That will make you queen, I mean. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So we often take a title as women, forgetting that that title holds value. That title only comes when we have fulfilled a mandate. So that's what I took. She's a very everyday woman, everyday woman. Nothing special about Queen Esther, actually. Mm. Let's just call her Esther. Nothing, I mean, as a matter of fact, she was an orphan. Talk about simplicity. Wow. She was worse than your everyday child that even is from a, a, a single mother home. She was raised by her uncle, her family member, not her father, not her mother. Wow. So she is someone you would say that got the short end of the stick if there was even a stick that was given to her. Mm. So what is the excuse for the rest of us? That was the most intriguing part about Esther. It still is for me. Not about the queen. Let's keep the crown aside. She knows when to take up the crown. You don't wear a crown every day. When you're in your bedroom, you don't wear a crown. When you step out, you don't wear a crown. You wear a crown when the occasion calls for it. And if you're always wearing a crown, what you need a king Every man that walks by would think you already have a king. Wow. So why even ask you, will you be my wife? Can I make you my queen? You've already put yourself off the market. So perhaps it's about a false pride that we need to set aside. But that's that's my take on Esther, a very simple girl who didn't even partake in the stick. <laughs> Mm. Not the short end of the stick, definitely not the long end of the stick. Yes. So that's that's it. Wow, that's amazing. I mean, this opening remark has blessed my socks off already. And I think what has stood out the most for me is we're obsessed with titles, right? Yeah. But there is a character requirement, there is a virtue requirement to attach yourself to some of these titles or some of these offices and all of that stuff. And instead of us to take the time to do the work to become that person, we're obsessed with the external adornments, (laughs) externally embracing the titles whilst not being internally reflective of that position. Um, And that's very important for singles, for married. It's important that we all become you know, women of character. And if, if you even take the conversation outside of a marriage context, there are certain places that if you don't have the right character, you can't get to certain doors that wouldn't open up to you if you haven't become a full reflection of the type of person that should be in that room. Mm-hmm. And so that's, that's a very big one. Let's zoom in a little on Esther's marriage to King Xerxes and the way that the entire thing switched hands from Vashti to Esther. Some oh. people think she was lucky, <laughs> but from what you've said, she had already been that woman. She had already been that queen. The opportunity just presented itself and she ascended the throne, but it wasn't in that moment that she became the queen. She had already been a queen the whole time. But let's talk a little about that, that shift that happened between the former queen Vashti and Esther. What do you think was Esther's winning edge? What do you think was her advantage? What can women learn from Vashti and Esther's story and how the tables turn around? What can married women learn, even singles? You know, what we can take from Esther is this. You have to be a woman of sacrifice. Hmm. Esther was willing to bet her life at the stake, she was willing to even have her death sentence pronounced by her own husband. Now, we can go on the other end of and say, well, you know, are you trying to promote violence and this and this and that? Let's just be honest. A woman of sacrifice. Mm-hmm. It's not about violence. It's about sticking your life for what you believe in. In the most humble way. Talk about meek and humble. This is a queen. This is She's now a queen. She's operating in the office of a queen. But she also understood something. 
You can't be a queen without God. Mm. Wow. You cannot understand what it means to be a heir, to be royalty, unless God, the King of Kings, teaches you your identity. And that's by the power of the Holy Spirit. Anyone else teaching you how to be a queen is walking in the flesh. That's carnality. You cannot operate in a kingdom such as that. King Ahasuerus had many eunuchs and princes mm -hmm. that were in his cabinet. They were the ones that made the decision, what do we do with Vashti? Mm -hmm. So our husbands, they have other people they talk to. They have brothers. They have friends. You talk about, they always say, oh, blood is thicker than water. Water from the womb. So a covenant that a man chooses to make is much stronger than anything you can think about. Wow. He chose to make that with you, his wife, and he chose to make that with the friends in his life. And never underestimate the power of a man's friendship. That is a mistake a lot of women do. I'm the woman in your life. You start to say that once you've gotten the crown. <laughs> Wow. And when you get the crown, you you have to operate with the wisdom to know when to shut up. Wow. It's not all the time. When you see men are busy, that is not the time to show that you're strong. Because they will take care of you the way a lion takes care of meat. There will be nothing left on the bones except blood. And you have no one to blame for that but yourself. And that's the mistake is walking in carnality with the crown when we ought to do that with the king of kings, with the ancient of days. You ask God, who do they say you are? He will say, I am. Who gives that type of an answer? I am. And so here you are, you're queening without the spirit that makes one royalty. Hmm. And that was Vashti's mistake. Because had she had the perfect influence of the Holy Spirit, wow. had she listened, had she had counsel, the Holy Spirit is a counselor. Mm. And when we were too foolish to perhaps hear, because maybe our spiritual ears aren't that open, he put some Mordecai in our lives. Oh my God. So without a Mordecai, whether it's Auntie Mordecai, Uncle Mordecai, Sister Mordecai, you're going into the dungeon and the fourth, there will not be a fourth man in the fire. There will not be because you decided you can be queen all by yourself. You were too negligent. You know, we always say on easy lies the head that wears the crown. The crown. <laughs> oh Vashti, Vashti knew her husband loved her. And we all see that. We we read that. Mm -hmm. Because the king summoned her when his heart was so glad. It was at the, mm. at the apex of his joy mm. that he summoned Vashti. Meaning that he treasured that woman. Mm. So never take the love of your husband for granted. Wow. This is the peak when he wants to showcase his pride. He's already done showing the palace and, and his realms where he controls. He's done showing all of that. This is the only thing that made him glad that he wanted to show. He saved the best for last. Wow. Wow. And she just dismissed that. Hmm. For what? She was with other women. So my sister, when they talk about Jezebel's spirit, hmm. Jezebel may not be coming after your man. He may be coming after you so that you can do bad all by yourself. Goodness. With your hand, by yourself, you will destroy what God has given to you. Oh my goodness. Jezebel was not in the court with the king. Jezebel was not whispering to King Ahasuerus. She yes. chose a company of women that made her feel, you are queen. That's Vashti. That's Vashti, forgetting they did not give her that title. What happened, my sister, afterwards? You now see there are two different types of women, according to the scripture, in Esther, Queen mm -hmm. Esther's book, the book. Mm -hmm. You call them just the normal women, 
and the other is a noble woman. Mm. So if you're not in the class of the noble woman, you're in the other class. So, and these are the princes talking. They said, the noble women will be upset. The other class of women will give their husbands a, a tough time. Yeah. So who are you? What class do you belong to? Do you want Jezebel in your midst? Because I tell you this, the greatest enemy of the woman is not the man. It's not the man. It's never been the man. Because a woman is a man's pride, especially one that he has beautified, one that he delights in at the apex of his day. All he wants to do is just behold her. It wasn't about sexuality. It wasn't anything lustful. He just wanted to present his bride the way Christ would soon one day present us. That was her mistake. And so I think, you know, the king now began to walk gently with his now wife, Esther. Because if you notice when the queen Esther came, Scripture says that he was alone. Mm. He was alone. My thing is, he probably wanted to summon Queen Esther, but he didn't want to lose another wife. Wow. Wow. That I mean, if, if it were, what would you do? That makes sense. It took a couple of years. So he wasn't a beast of a king. It took quite, it took at least, what, four years before he married Queen Esther, because the whole process is a whole year. Mm -hmm. So the grooming and the preparation. Exactly. So this is how the Holy Spirit works. Esther, on the other hand, is scared. Uncle Mordecai, look, my head is gonna, you know, it's going to roll <laughs> because I have not been summoned. Yes. She's a woman of sacrifice. If you're not willing to lay your life down, don't enter marriage. If you're not ready to die, do not enter it. If not, you're not ready to say, I love you to the death of me. Hmm. Don't enter it because you never know what's going to come up tomorrow. You never know where Jezebel will pipe her pipe. Hmm. You never know where she will string that melodious instrument. Oh my goodness, that harp will so draw his heart away from your hands if you're not piping and if you're not stringing your own instruments. But this is what the Holy Spirit did. You know, oftentimes we pray and we pray, oh God, I'm so scared. How do I do this? And the Holy Spirit just does one thing. The heart of kings is in his hands. And he knew the heart of the king was to behold his wife. So Esther simply come in that alleviated the king because she was at the outer court, court when he saw her and immediately he stood up. What does that tell you? It's not just about the favor that comes with the three days fasting and prayer. It's about the heart of kings being in God's hands. And God will never put you to shame if you are a living sacrifice. Mm. And that's who she was. She was a living sacrifice. Mm. You have to stand up for the truth. It wasn't about other women or other men or children or this. It was about the right thing to do. Mm. And the mere fact that even the king's life was at stake, to have such a wicked man, Haman, as your right hand, there were so many things at play, so many things at play. The answer had to just be God. And he he gently brought her and presented her to her husband. And you notice what happened? They remained together. There wasn't a time where you heard about the king being the king being away or the queen being away for such a long time anymore. He was taken aback by her beauty. She was a pleasant woman. When you're meek and humble in spirit, my sister. When you're meek and humble in spirit, 
You don't need to announce that you are a queen. Wow. The atmosphere, the atmosphere will do that for you. Wow. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm already stuttering and we're only a few minutes in. Listen, sis, you are a well of wisdom. You are an absolute well of wisdom. I'm so grateful that I get to drink of your well. I'm so grateful that I get to sit in this conversation and just be immersed by the quality of wisdom that is coming from you and that will go to people who listen afterwards. And there's so many themes that have emerged from, from everything you said. And I've, I've been doing my best to stay focused whilst trying to write copiously mm -hmm. and not miss out any, any of the juices that you're releasing. The many themes you've talked about, identity, you've talked about God and the personal relationship with the Holy Spirit and walking with him as your teacher, because there's a dimension of the Holy Spirit that is teacher. We know him as helper, we know him as comforter, but we have to tap into his teaching dimension because he has to educate us on how we can be this women that you're mm -hmm. describing. You've talked about pride, you know, interwoven. You have to be meek and humble. There's so much that has come out of this, but I want to highlight and spotlight something that you've mentioned, which is the Holy Spirit has to be your teacher. And the reason why this is particularly important is because at least for married women, every man is different. There is no template that would that a seminar would give you mm -hmm. that will mirror your exact spouse. Mm -hmm. There are nuances, there are intricate details, and only his creator can give you that secret. Only his creator can give you the secret weapons. So my, my, my big takeaway from this really is if we're gonna, you know, begin to do marriage God's way and begin to establish kingdom marriages as well and we're going to thrive in our marriages, the Holy Spirit has to teach us. Yes. And it goes both ways. He teaches the husbands too, yes. just as much as he teaches yes. the wives. Um, and the thing you said about the mother cares that the Lord has planted in our lives, let me tell you, that is facts. Because God is rooting for us. Mm -hmm. Many times he's put those helpers in our path either because of lack of discernment or because of lack of faithful stewardship we don't cultivate those relationships enough to benefit from it, what the Lord has destined. Um, sometimes we're left stranded. We're left trying to figure it out all on our own when the Lord has in fact put Mordecai's and even um, Hagar's, the man who mentored Esther mm -hmm. in the ways of the palace. Yeah. He's put people like that to teach us and that is so important. Mm -hmm. I guess my next follow-up question would be, practically speaking, how can women, you know, how can women, um, how shall I say this, become better wives? Just you know, all the, 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 the nuggets that you've dropped, how do we merge this together and say, hey, this is, this is, these are the steps, if you will, to take, you start from here, one, two, three, it's a starting point. It might not be exhausting, but it might help, you know, give us some, some more, you know, definitiveness to it that's that's a tough question how do women i'm become, sorry <laughs> how do women become better wives the thing is you can only become a better wife to your husband mm -hmm. so the gauge of whether you're becoming better or not is on your husband oh, wow and your children that's it because you're only wife to one Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. And like I stated earlier, there's one thing that I've known, and I've known this by the power of the Holy Spirit, and God has not allowed this to depart from my heart. Mm -hmm. And that is, as we've stated earlier, that the heart of kings are in his hands. That includes that husband. Mm -hmm. Because our Lord said, the Holy Spirit searches the hearts of God. So what he hears, he tells us. The same thing is nobody knows the character, the content of a heart of a person mm. except the Holy Spirit. That's why if you really want to know your character, go into maybe seven days fasting, like true fasting and prayer. 
and you will see certain characters start to come up. Don't try to suppress it. That's him showing you, sister, <laughs> work. <laughs> work on yourself. <laughs> you know, so that's how we become. You cannot become anything that is good without God that is good. Even Christ said it. Don't call me good. Only the father is good. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to become a better wife, you need to wife the spiritual way. Mm. You need it's to wife the spiritual way. Wow. But there is one important thing that perhaps is more tangible, more easy even for the non-believer to do. And that is to have forbearance, not forgiveness. You can easily forgive, you know, but you remember and then you count all the wrongs and the rights and the, the birthdays missed and the anniversaries missed. Mm. But when you have forbearance, you've already purposed in your heart that no matter what, I'm staying. Wow. wow. And so it makes love easier. Wow. Because my sister, we have forbearance with our children, even the murderers. Mothers have their children out here committing all heinous crimes and they're still there weeping for their children, praying for their children. Their children are even abusive to other people, yet they are present. You show up every day for someone you gave birth to, but not every day for someone who you're doing forever with. Because you haven't had it in your mind that this is forever. So I need to have forbearance. Forbearance gets you ready. It's kind of like you're saying, you know, always have your emergency bag ready because you never know. That's what it is. No matter what, I've already forgiven you, but I just want us to talk about it. That's forbearance. <laughs> this love is not going that's, to change. That's a good way to put it. <laughs> you know, my love for you is not dependent on the good things you do for me or the things that you remember. My love for you is pure because it's agape love. We have to have agape love in marriage. Wow. It is the purest form of God here on earth. It's marriage. Mm. God thought about all the many ways to make this happen. And he said, you know what? Husband and wife, you have to be one. So there's no such thing as a better half. There's no such thing as a 50-50 or I'm feeling 80%. Are you feeling 20? Okay, let's let's switch up. No. You have to come every day. And you can't do that without an altar. Mm. You can't. My husband has his altar. I have my altar. We have our altar. Mm. So individual and collective. And collective. So good. Because you're working, he's working. So what do you do? Mm. And sometimes Satan is not going to come at you, you know, all together at once because he understands if you're supposed to be one if i attack one i have that's automatically attacking the other both. so you both have to have your altars mm. you both have to be strong if you want to be a better wife be a better daughter of god wow okay get the, get the approval let him say well done good and faithful servant <laughs> You've been promoted. And you will know whether in dreams or mm -hmm. your surroundings starts mm -hmm. to change. Your husband is more gentle. Mm -hmm. He's he's more home. Mm -hmm. Let's say, you know, he usually comes in around five. Now it's four-ish. Oh you God. start to notice. Wow. You know, he starts to tell you where he's going and when he might come mm -hmm. back. If he comes back late, he apologizes. Those are the telltale signs that the one who has the heart has been changing it, wringing it, doing a surgical work on it. All you have to do is maintain your altar. And the man will tell you what he wants. Men aren't that shy. <laughs> mm -hmm. He will so tell good. you. He will tell you. He will tell you what he wants. And anytime a man, this, this is what I'll say to our sisters, anytime your husband touches you, never say no. Mm. Never ever. 
Never, I know, I know sometimes you may be menstruating, yes, but there are ways to say no without saying no. Mm. So learn the act of femininity. You can turn around, you can kiss him, you can hold him, you can massage him. Mm. Oh, that feels good, honey. You compliment what he's doing. So, but you know, somebody came visiting and you may not like that visitor. <laughs> <laughs> the confusion alone will make him pause. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. So we have to learn ways to communicate. Hmm. That's it. Wow. Oh my goodness. <laughs> what is like I'm having oh my goodness. I'm having such a such a fab experience just having this conversation with you. And as you speak. The baby Marbomb is leaping. You're saying all of the right things. And the spirit of God in me can be a witness that this is the truth that you're saying. And you're saying a lot of unconventional things. But hey, what, what has convention helped us achieve? You know, hey, the cause of most of the problems that we're having. So it looks like we're going to have to go the unconventional route to achieve the results that we're looking for. We've touched on so many things. How can, how can a woman be a better wife? Your relationship with God has to be solid. Your personal relationship with God has to be solid. And it can sometimes look like Christian women sound like a broken record when we keep emphasizing those things. But the, the truth remains, it's the foundation. You can't have a building without that foundation being in place. So we're gonna keep reiterating it. Moreover, I consider marriage to be God's idea. There's no way you're gonna get it right leaving him out of it you know it's impossible how do you achieve success when you leave the manufacturer of the idea out of it you're gonna fumble you're gonna waste time trying to figure mm -hmm. things out it's gonna cause you pain it's gonna cause you stress so we we, yeah. we need to get god on board and then he also talked about forbearance my goodness very unconventional message because you know social media is teaching us a lot of things social media is educating women there's research that is saying you know people go on tiktok first to search for the answers before mm -hmm. yeah so we are allowing social media to replace the voice of god so we we want to hear the voice of social media people's opinions first before hearing god and guess what social media is saying i wouldn't take that if i were you you're too good for that you are a queen. You don't deserve that. And this is not to encourage, you know, bad behavior or toxic behavior in the mm -hmm. context of a marriage. But this is to say there is the place of forbearance, like you're saying. And sometimes we just need to stick it out in prayer and trusting that the one who holds the heart, like you were saying, will change it, will touch it, will transform it. But until then, our posture needs to be forbearance. And I, you know, I really loved that you 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 mentioned that you also talked about um, becoming. Um, I'm paraphrasing, but essentially growing in character, because as you're growing the Lord, He shows you things, areas that are rough edges that needs to be sharpened, and as He He shows us those things, we you know align. It's not easy, but we submit and we ask Him for the help. But like you said, you have to make up your mind that this is what you're going to do, that what you're going to do this because that mindset really impacts behavior. It does. It does impact behavior. This is, this is like, wow, I'm learning, learning so much. Um, but I want you to speak a little bit to the very controversial subject of feminis feminism. <laughs> um, as it relates to the world that we live in today. Mm -hmm. It does look like some women are taking it to the extreme end of the pole. I get the fact that women are trying to advocate for the rights of other women, right to equal pay with men if you're putting in the same amount of work. And that's good. You know, women are, not, women are advocating for a lot of things, but we're, we're crossing the line. We're getting to the slimy part of the edge where we're now saying, I don't need a man. I'm going to, you know, a lot of these mindsets are 
being absorbed by a lot of women it's influencing the way they show up in their relationships is influencing the attitude they have towards your relationship what do you do you have anything to say about it because this is such a hot topic you know women in that caliber that always says i don't need a man they always say that until they meet the right man and then unfortunately they so damage themselves that that right man doesn't want them wow and and so they now continue with that heartbreak oh i definitely don't need a man the vicious cycle it's not it becomes more vicious because they now have a rejection Mm. whether it's direct rejection or indirect rejection. Mm. That is the problem when you lie to yourself. Some lies, you know, the most dangerous lie is when you don't even realize it's a lie. Mm. You know, I don't need a man. I can do this by myself. That's true. You can do a lot by yourself. Everybody can. So does he. He can do a lot by himself. <laughs> mm -hmm. But he still wants a wife. It's not about what you can do for yourself. It's about what you want. You don't need him, but you want him. Mm. I don't want you around, but I need you around. I can't live with you, but I can't live without you. I don't want to live without you. Mm. That's the difference. Mm. And once women begin to tell themselves that and kind of separate the reality from the nonsense they realize, okay, this is different. It's not about needing a man. It's about wanting. The life that you're building for yourself did not come easy. And, and 10 years, it's not going to come easy. There are going to be patches whereby you fall, you get up, you're sick, you're weak, you're strong. It's the same thing. Mm -hmm. Anything worth having is worth fighting and working hard for. So, good. so femininity for me is the same thing as masculinity. It is. It's not about a job or making more money or not. That's just, that is the lie. You know, Satan is, is very beautiful. And so does all he does. And the deception is a very crafty thing. Oh, that's why he chose the snake. A snake is beautiful. Forget the venom. Forget the venom. Just mm. shine the light and, and watch the scales sparkle. Very beautiful creature. And so you never know that there is a venom when you look at the snake. And sometimes you may not even know it's the snake until you see the head. Mm. But oftentimes, Satan will never show his ugly head. <laughs> if not, you'll be afraid. You will know better. But he shows you the rest of the body. And so you think it's a beautiful mermaid with long hair. Wow. Perhaps that can be a part of these, these seashells and sing la la la. But it's Satan nonetheless. And mermaid is still Satan. And when I say masculinity and femininity are the same thing for me. Masculinity is the power of the man. Femininity is the power of the woman. Just different names. That's how I look at it. So if you're looking at femininity as a woman and it's for you, you're thinking weakness, then you've got it all wrong. Mm. Femininity is the name that is called your power that you possess. Masculinity is the name called for the power that he possesses. Both are powers. Both are superpowers. You have your left hand and your right hand. They're both hands, but you need to differentiate which is right, which is left. And so as a woman, we think the issue is always submission, <laughs> right? Do I submit? Do I not submit? You know, what's going on? And the truth of the matter is this, my dear. If we can start to understand, I think I've gone a bit dark here. Hopefully we'll cover. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do I continue from... Okay, so when we talk about femininity and the woman, Regina, we are giving up our powers without even a kryptonite. Mm. Usually you say, oh, what's the weakness of a woman? What's the weakness of a man? Let's take them down. We're just surrendering. 
without a kryptonite, without someone asking us about our weakness, just giving it up, our powers. Mm. A woman is naturally strong in a different way. Yes. Think about it. When you look at children, man, you know, girl and boy, what usually happens at a tender age? The girl develops faster than the boy. Yeah. Stronger, faster, more intelligent, clean. <laughs> First to clean up. <laughs> more nurturing, but it gets to an age where the boy takes off. And it's kind of like within a summer, within six months, he's six inches tall, you know? right. taller, the voice is changed deeper. You see the Adam's apple, everything, the, the hair is coming in different places. That's what it is. But the woman maintained her strength mm -hmm. from childhood. So we have a, a sustaining power Men have the power that exerts when it's needed, right? So that's how you see a man, you know, he exerts that power, then he's tired. But you never stop running. Your mom, you're washing dishes, you're cooking, you're this, you're that. The kids are calling you. You have to meet him a few yes, hours sir. later. Yes, sir. <laughs> that's the power of a woman. I don't know anything more powerful than that. So I don't need to compete with him. I just need to let him see it in the most gentle way. Hmm. Because once you try to show someone that you're doing it better than them, they will show you that you can't. That's just the human nature. That person automatically becomes competitive. Facts. So good. I don't, I've never seen a man or heard a man say, oh, whatever a woman can do, I can do better. And there are lots of single fathers out there. Let's be with me. Let's be right. They never say, oh, I'm both the mom and the dad. No, they never say that. They always say, you know, I'm just here you know, for my for my Doing child. what I can. Doing what I can. But what what is it that we need so badly that we need that validation from Satan? Mm. And it keeps you in that mental that, oh, you're strong because you're doing both mom and dad. You're not doing both mom and dad. You're doing mom. And if you make the mistake of trying to do that, you then mess up that child's mentality of what a male figure is. And so you have now a generation that's coming up thinking a man ought to be the way mom showed me. But mom was never a man. Oh my goodness. Mom is a woman. And so you think I can do bad all by myself. I can be both man and woman. And I need this type of man because my mom showed me. Your mom showed you, but there was never a man for you to see. So you're still seeing your mom. And that's okay. that vicious cycle. Mm -hmm. And once you train a child and groom a child into that, when they grow up, what do you think is going to happen? Mm -hmm. Until they encounter a King of Hazarus. Until they encounter a King David. But then unfortunately, they don't want you. Have you ever seen a relationship last for 10 years? They break up six months later, he marries another person. I've seen it. Wow. Ask him why he married Queen Esther. Peace. That's it. Yes. Wow. And Christ is the Prince of Peace. If we're walking with the Holy Spirit, the first lesson he's going to teach you is how to be silent. Hmm. Oh my goodness. That is the first lesson he will teach you. Because when you're talking and others are talking, one, you don't hear God speaking to you. Mm -hmm. And two, you're definitely not going to hear your husband speaking to you. And if you do not master the act of silence, femininity will become your worst nightmare. You will not know what to do with it. You would not know how to be the woman that you ought to be. You don't even know what a definition of a woman is. Mm. It's not a woe to man. It's a woo man. You have to woo your man. Haven't you noticed before you get married, he's the one chasing you. After we get married, it's... <laughs> after, go there. 
You have to woo, you know, you woo. You. <laughs> and it's a wooing in a good way because you're now one. Mm. Mm. That's what you know, that's that's all it is. Mm. You have to master silence. So for me, for instance, I have children. I am a stay-at-home mother. There's noise all the time. Mm. But I can still hear my maker. Even if he just whispers, I still hear. And sometimes he plays that game where he would drop something in a glitch just to be sure that your mind is still, that your, your attention is still on him, even though you've got kids running around. Right, sis, listen. <laughs> I'm yes. telling you. And when I pick it up, I laugh. I say, ah, gotcha. <laughs> you know, that you try to fast one on me. Mm -hmm. You play that, you, you're friends with the Holy Spirit. That way, when you're hurt by your loved one, men, oh my goodness, the person you love most is the person that breaks your heart the most. <laughs> and even with that heartbreak, you still want only him to fix it. So why wow. not let fix it? <laughs> oh my goodness. Why not let him that fix so it? True. You know, because if it was your friend, oh, girl, he did X, Y, and Z to me. And he said, really? He did that? Oh, wow. You know, you need to do this thing. By the time you get home, you're still not satisfied because mm -hmm. he hasn't said a word to you. He hasn't acknowledged what happened. So you've just wasted your time talking to Jezebel about your throne room, about your secret mm -hmm. place. Nobody needs to know what sacrifice you're making on your altar. Because that argument, that those disagreements are part of the sacrifice. Mm -hmm. When you have disagreement with someone, you, the layers of your heart are also being revealed. True. So true. And any disagreement is a layer being revealed. So you can either decide to make it bond you or to separate you. Wow. But if you're a feminine woman, you understand that you have to cover the nature of your child the nakedness of your husband. You have to keep, you know, a woman, you know, it's, 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 it's a woman when she understands privacy. There are certain things you hide. Women are good at saving. Saving is hiding. That's what, it, that's what it, we're naturally good at hiding things. So why expose yourself? That is what femininity is. It's being a wolf in sheep's clothing. Mm. Mm. masculinity I don't need a clothing I'm a wolf and so the enemy will make a mistake coming after the sheep thinking it's a sheep not knowing it's a wolf mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so you're even more protected you're you're in in, in perfect protection mm -hmm. so that's that's how I look at it it's understanding that it is my power Mm. And it's not my weakness. It is the title of a queen to make all things beautiful wow. and perfect and to keep it protected. That's it. Wow. Sis, <laughs> honestly, I can sit with you here all day. <laughs> literally listen to you speak all day and you know this every time we have a phone conversation it always runs over it, it always runs over it does. there's just so much good stuff coming at me i'm like i can't believe this this is part of what prompted me to just you know get this recorded so that other people can be blessed by this beautiful beautiful anointing and ministry that the lord has placed on your life and the good thing about it is you're not just throwing out a bunch of good sounding words you're living it every day and i think that's the difference that makes an uh, that's that's a defining difference it's the fact that every day you're laying down your life you're paying the price you're you're doing it and so when you speak of this way it carries so much power because there is fruit there is fruit to show that that what you're saying um is very very true um I guess I want to start, I, I want to ask you two more questions and I'm being very mindful of time. Mm -hmm. And the debate in my head is just which questions should I prioritize? <laughs> <laughs> because um, 
there's a lot but let's let's shift a little to the single folks okay. um, now that they haven't gotten into it this is the best time for them to get mentored and to yeah. learn and to get a foretaste or so sneak peek into what the future what to expect uh, what are some of the things that you think singles need to be aware of to be mindful of or even to be doing right now in their single season that can set them up for um, marital success, not just marital success, but kingdom marriage, kingdom marital success. So being successful in their kingdom marriages or building a kingdom marriage. What are some of the things that singles need to know? Like if you could go back in time and speak to your single self, what are the top three things that you tell yourself about marriage now that you're in it for almost a decade, what is it that you would tell your single self? I would say, do not allow anyone to put a curse on you that God has not validated. Wow. Because a lot of single people may not come from good homes. Mm -hmm. They may not even have had the experience of a good kingdom marriage a kingdom marriage that's the majority actually i would say the majority have never witnessed a kingdom marriage because we are in a social media stage and you know everyone is living a vida loca you know this couple couple goals x y and z relationship goals yeah yes exactly that's the word because i'm not even out there so i i, I you know <laughs> But the thing is this, I would say to the single, get on your knees and make one prayer. Say, God, I do not want a cosmetic marriage. Hmm. I want a marriage that glorifies you. And I guarantee you, my sister, the jealousy in God will arise over you. Because he's taking the glory. Mm -hmm. And once you make that prayer, you also have to be intentional now about how you live your life. How many people know your secrets? Mm -hmm. How many know the sacrifices you're making in your secret place? Nobody should know that. It's like you're doing an open heart surgery and people are coming in and out. Infection what? control. Infection control. Privacy. Let God finish it. Let him sew you back up. Let the let the wounds heal. You know, some people are so damaged and they don't realize it. Damaged people damage others. Broken but it, people, takes, it takes God to end that vicious cycle. And you talk about bloodline issues too. Mothers that are terrible. Wow. Fathers that are terrible. And so you have daughters that say, you know, I don't, I'm afraid of marriage because, you know, I don't want to marry the wrong man. Are you serious? Hmm. And some say men are scum or all men are dogs. Well, then did God create all dogs? Last time I checked, we were made in his image in likeness. Wow. You know, so if you're going, if you're a single person, you need to be intentional. But there's one thing I would say to look forward to for a man. How do you gauge if he is the one or not? Mm -hmm. If he is someone that you can learn from, then he's most likely on the yes category. Because we're women, we need people to teach us. Absolutely. Facts. 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 It's, it's just it. We like to learn new things. Yes. But we don't realize that it's we actually want it from a man because we want to learn this new makeup, this new hair, this new this, this new that. But that's who we are. That lets you know that that's who we are naturally. We like to learn. And so we need someone that can teach us. And that also means someone that can lead. Leading isn't about oh, being a macho man. No, leading is, can you teach me? Do you know how to teach me? Are you patient when I make a mistake? Mm -hmm. Can you be God to me? Mm. Can you be father to me? Because scripture says the man leaves. It never says the woman leaves. 
Because a woman goes from her father's house into another man's house. You, the man, have to leave uh. completely. Completely. Nobody is paying your bride price as a man. <laughs> yes. You know? Yeah. Nobody, nobody cares. You have to do the work. <laughs> you know, let Eve come in in her splendor mm. and learn. That was the issue with Adam. He failed to teach. And so when the test came and the scorer came, he said to the scorer, it was the woman you, it was the woman, no? It's, she did it. But did you teach her? Mm. Teaching is not, it's like, it's, you know, it's like a uh, potty training a baby. Mm. It's over and over until they get it. So good. You don't throw the baby away. Absolutely. You keep going. Absolutely. You keep going. You keep going. Wow. And so as a single lady, hmm. you have to be, you have to be positioned for that surgery. Much needed surgery. So much needed. So you don't want to bring all that baggage with you, right? You hear my kids screaming. <laughs> you don't you don't need to bring all that baggage. You don't and sometimes it's inevitable, right? You don't completely heal because it's a journey. It's a work in progress. But the mistake is when you enter the marriage, don't say I have arrived. Mm. And and then you stop presenting yourself every day. You have to present yourself every day. Mm -hmm. You have to. So as, as a single, this is this is what I, you know, I tell myself as a young lady, present myself. I say, God, I don't want my heart. My heart is deceitful. I knew that from day one. I knew that Isn't from that all of us, really. <laughs> all but we have to know that that is the truth. And you have to be the type that you have to hear God first before you hear any other person. Because we are each other's greatest enemy because we like to compliment each other to the death of us. That's why a lot of women don't like men because man will tell you, that's not true. You are, you are very proud. A man will tell you, you're proud. <laughs> a woman will tell you, oh, sis, you're just confident. Mm. Mm. Very misleading. Very misleading. Pride. Pride will destroy you. And single people often are pride. Marriage will humble you. <laughs> so let us start now to, to practice humility. <laughs> practice humility. And don't listen to when someone compliments you, you just say thank you. But if God hasn't given you that compliment, just keep working. Keep it's dangerous working. to accept it from someone else. It's da it's very dangerous. Who? Why are you accepting it? Who are you accepting it for? On on whose behalf? Mm. Someone you don't know, a stranger. Wow. Someone you're not married to. And sometimes that's why I say be careful because even our parents sometimes. They're not the best people to give us compliment either. They either lie or they curse. So it's always on the other, you know, on the extreme. <laughs> wow. There, it's rare to have that in between, that truth, that honesty. Because every parent either, you know, if they're good, they want you to believe that you're the best, you know. But if they're bad, they're raining curses on you. But let me tell you as a single person, if that's you, your story is not over. Mm. God has the final say. And if you have the parents that are always loving you and complimenting you, one day you'll run into a man that will tell you mm. <laughs> the absolute truth. <laughs> <laughs> you would think your world is over. You know, you say, I, I met a beast. He was so mean today. You just was yes. mystic and this and that. But he yeah. told you the truth. You have yeah. no manners. <laughs> That's <laughs> That's what it is. So as a single person, I would say present yourself every day. Mm -hmm. Present yourself every day. And every decision you make today matters. You may not know it. Give yourself, when you get married 10 years later, you will see. 
five years into it, two years into it, you're going to see that every stage of your life mattered. Mm. Every stage, every mm. day, every mm. week, every month, every year of your life. Because if we are going to be accountable to God, do we not think nature is also taking account? Mm. 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 You know, so that's it. Oh. oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. This is so, so good. Everything you've said. As a single, you need to heal. And you also talked about <clears throat> the fact that a litmus test for knowing if he's the one is he must be able to teach you. He should be in a position where he even knows enough to pass on the knowledge, information um, to someone else. And that's that's very critical. That's very critical. It might not be the only thing, but it's very important that we know. Okay. Just in keeping to my word, it's it's about an hour now, and I want us to, to wrap it up now. Ask you the absolute last question, and feel free to make it brief. Um, but in a world where you know women are doing big things, God is calling women to do big things. God is anointing women, opening doors for them, or yeah. you know, exposing them to opportunities that can become a tension, especially if she's married. Not all, but a lot of women are dealing with that. And sometimes it looks like the success is interpreted to be insubordination, a lack of submission, or, you know, somehow it depends on who you are with, but the men can feel like, oh, because you think you're something now, and then they start to amplify um, little issues. Um, but how can a cold woman, a strong woman, an anointed woman, a woman who um, is, is called to do big things, right? How can that woman still stay submitted in marriage and still have that uh, kingdom marriage where there is respect, there's honor, there is the chain of leadership that she submits to? Um, what kind of mindset does she need to embrace so that she can fully fulfill her purpose with her husband's blessing? You just answered it. It's with your husband's blessing. It's just, it's that, it's really that simple. Mm -hmm. A lot of us are called because scripture says, I will pour forth my spirit on the last day. And if you are married, and you know, not all marriages are sweet. Mm -hmm. And not all men, not all called women are married to called men or married to even God-fearing men. And also, let's even come from that perspective of assuming that you're in that category where you're on, on the extreme. The, the thing is this, you have to make him feel like he is Lord over you. So again, humility comes into play. He said, look, whatever you call him, honey, baby, you know, man, his name, <laughs> whichever one, my okay. lord, my king, you know. If you say no, it's a no. If you say yes, it's a yes. And this is this is a trick, not a trick, it's not a trick, but this is the easiest way. Mm. Let every woman ask herself, when was the last time she knelt before her husband? Any man you kneel before, he will protect you with his life. And he will get on his own knees to make sure that you stand on his back and stand higher. Wow. That is a man for you. If he knows, she will not move unless I say no. She will stay if I say stay. And she needs my blessings to move. That means she sees me as God. You see that? Even if you're called, God himself will not break his rule. He expects you to know, okay, yeah, you're called, but he expects you to know that I need your husband's permission also. Because you can take off and you can keep going and he'll keep quiet. See, God, God is good at being silent. <laughs> 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 and Satan is good at presenting a court in the court of heaven. Mm -hmm. Satan is really good. So you're busy, you're going, 
if you're taking off, your ministry is doing well without your husband's approval because God is on my side because I'm doing it for God. You're, you're doing it for yourself. And then in the court of heaven, Satan is saying, okay, you see her? I need permission. She's broken X, Y, Z law. Wow. I need permission. I have Karashika on the other side. Whatever wall of protection that is keeping that man from looking at her, I need it, I need it lowered. Wow. Hmm. I need permission. And God says no. He can't say no on your behalf because there's a legal case against you. So woman of God, if you're going to be a woman of God, know the word of God. Hmm. Know the laws that govern divinity and humanity. There's celestial and terrestrial life. Choose, but you must be aware of both. That man must say yes. I don't care how many men of God impart you, lay hands on you. There is no blessing greater than that of a husband over his wife. Because the law even states, even if you're coming from a background of, you know, occult, occultic background, you know, idol worshippers, sorcerers, if you come under a husband, he now has the legal right over you. And he can break that if he decides to break it. If he's a man of God that understands spiritual things. But for him, if he's coming from a heat, nobody can break it for him but him. <laughs> Nobody can break it for him because he is the one that carries the seeds. So woman of God, if you really want to see God work in your life, do what you can to get the blessing of your husband. If you're sick, try this. Ask your husband to pray for you. Ask your, your unbelieving husband to pray for you. Oh my Even if he doesn't know what to say, he just okay. You're you you okay. Just put in Jesus' name, honey. He put in Jesus' name. <laughs> Give it a day or two, or even instantly, you will feel the difference. Oh my because you're married, you're one, and the scripture says that your meekness and your gentleness will turn his heart. Mm. So that's it. Get his blessing and make sure he knows that you will not move without him. That he is Lord over you. He is the God that you see. And no other person. That that is the commandment of your God. What man would not want to follow that God that you're serving? So that's it. Oh my goodness. I'm so touched by this entire conversation. And just the bounty of wisdom that has proceeded from it. Thank you so much. This, this has been very very life-changing and i've done my possible best to just sit back and listen without you know interfering so much but the thing you said about um if he doesn't say yes then the answer is not yes i think it also means that as women we have to die to ambition oh because sometimes we think ambition is worth fighting for we think well if it, this is a line that you can't cross and i fulfill my purpose i have to do this and do that but I think the Lord invites us to a life of death first. Because scripture says, except a corn of wheat falls to the ground and dies. And abides alone. But if it will die, it will be a more fruit. So sometimes when we just lay down, we say, you know what? The answer is no. Okay, fine. That sometimes he even turns around and says, okay, you know what? Okay, fine. You can, you can do it by himself. You know? But when we get into that tussle, that power tussle, mm -hmm. that's where the problem starts is what I'm making out of what you said. And you've put it, you've put this whole thing so beautifully. Thank you so much for honoring my invitation. Thank I don't know if this will be the last one. Heads up. <laughs> Jamelessly, I'm putting it out there. I feel like I would love to have you speak again and again and again and again as you're willing to. Um, just because I feel like you're, you're a pristine river. The, the spirit of God that flows through you is pure, is visible, is tangible. It has fruits. It's it's infectious. Just sitting here, just even knowing you, 
I feel like you've infected me with so many of this amazing principles and things. I'm so grateful. I could gush about you all day. You already know this. Like <laughs> officially, we're, we're we toast each other all the time. Yeah. But thank you so much. Thank you. Sis. Thank you for having me. Very grateful. Thank you so much. And I'm praying that everyone who watches this will be blessed by it mm -hmm. so immeasurably in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.